Mr. Prime Minister, the president has landed. The but he is, we are not yet in the presence. He's not yet here. He's not here yet. But the Netherlands is in the, the, the churn of Europe that's trying to figure out how to listen to this president and, most importantly, how to respond and react to this unique president of the United States. How will you approach that as you listen to him? Well, by, by judging him by his deeds. And when we look what he's actually doing, um, we can support a lot of his policies. Uh, we are not always in agreement, of course, but we were not always in agreement with Obama. And at the end of the day, the choice for the president in the US is up to the American people. And, and America is the leader of the free world. So we need to maintain a workable relationship. And I think that's exactly what we are all doing. But President Trump has imposed tariffs on washing machines. He's imposed tariffs on solar panels. Should the EU retaliate? Well, we should carefully uh, look into what he is doing. And if necessary, of course, we have to take steps. Um, but not all of a sudden. So everything has to be done in a step-by-step uh, step by step approach. Uh, I think the most crucial thing is with uh, Donald Trump to have a debate on the necessity of an international world order in which we have a strong UN, in which we have a strong uh, World Trade Organization, that we have a legal base under what we are doing worldwide, for example, on free trade, which is also in the American interest, by the way, very much in, in his interest in, of America. I mean, we have Brexit, we have the specter of currency wars or uh, protectionism, mm -hmm. we also have many other challenges, defense spending. If you were to to give me two priorities for the EU in 2018, what would they be? First of all, how to deal with Brexit. Because with Brexit and the UK leaving, we will lose the most important voice in terms of the liberal um, economy. Uh, free trade agreements, uh, uh, full f completing the internal market. I've always found that Theresa May and uh, David Cameron were fighting with me and others to do that. The Netherlands will now be the biggest country. We are four times smaller than the UK in our size of the economy. We are the biggest one in terms of completely supporting that agenda. So we are now working with other countries in the, in the EU to maintain that voice of, of liberalism. This is crucial because there is an impact on the UK for them leaving, on their economy. They are now the slowest growing economy in the G7. But there will also be an impact on the EU. Uh, secondly, how do we maintain the necessity of reforms within the EU of the 27 and in the Eurozone? And my worry is with the low interest rates at the moment that there is not enough incentive to do this. And then we get talk about all kinds of new structures. But the most important thing now is that everybody is doing what they as a country need to do in terms of uh, yeah, fiscal, uh, the, f the fiscal side, uh, stimulus in terms of making sure that their economy uh, gets back on a growth path. There is no other nation in the Western world that had to deal with the environment like the Netherlands. There's been the water, always a threat. You have been at the forefront of climate change for decades and even centuries. How do you adapt to a part of America that just says it's not true, there isn't climate change, it's a scam of the people of the Netherlands or the people of Germany and on and on and on. How do you adapt to that within the policy that you need from America? Well, first of all, by keeping the dialogue going with Donald Trump and his administration. And secondly, by working with those parts of the United States who are still very much supporting uh, the Paris Climate Agreement, like California, like many big cities, like uh, other states within the US, who uh, collectively still are among the 10 biggest economies in the world. So there is still a lot of uh, a big force in the US uh, to maintain support and even practical support also mm -hmm. in, in implementation uh, on the implementation side uh, for the Paris Agreement. I, I look and you're right, the Netherlands is for us yeah. is crucial. We would, half of our country would be, be below sea level yeah. if well, I we look not the, have the, done what we have done over the last 300 years. I, I look at the heritage of the Dutch flag of New York City and realize that the way we're going, two thirds of Dutch New York City will be submerged. Yeah, but they are very much involved with the city of New York. The yeah. Netherlands is very much involved. It's the city of New York after all the, the things happening last 10 years mm -hmm. with the, and the environmental impact on New York City. We're working with the mayor, with his team, mm -hmm. our best experts on water management uh, to make sure that the people in New York will keep their feet dry, also in the future. And there is a strong commitment from uh, the local and regional politicians. Uh, Prime Minister, on Brexit, so you said this was one of the main challenges for 2018. What does it mean for the budget? We know that you met with the uh, EU Commissioner for Budget, yeah. and then you tweeted something uh, saying that basically the, the, uh, the bloc's budget must be reduced once Brexit happens. Can you elaborate yeah. on that? Yeah, we, we 
we feel very strongly that with the UK leaving, uh, it also means that the budget has to be cut by the size of what the UK is now supplying to the budget. It makes only sense. Uh, because otherwise uh, we will have an, inf an, an inflated budget. Uh, and I very much believe that the EU needs to focus on where it adds value, the internal market, uh, border control, migration. Uh, you, reform, you want to reform the EU. Would the EU come out stronger? Realizing oh, that people yes. want to leave? Well, for example, on the internal market, uh, we need to implement the digital single market. We really now need to make work on to work on uh, the services internal market. Uh, and sometimes people ask me, mm. what do you think of the internal market? And, and my joke back then is that it would be a good idea. Mm. Because only for <laughs> such a limited amount of about 30% of the EU economy, we have the internal mm. market. And we know that we can add twice the size of the Dutch economy. 1.3 trillion euros to the overall European well, e Union economy if we implement what all is these plans. Your, what is your optimal euro level? I believe there's a meeting in Frankfurt today where Mr. Draghi will move forward with his great monetary challenge and central bank challenge, but at the heart of it, it's the political economics of the optimum level of the euro. Do you have in your yeah. head, a, I got to make some news here, stay with me. Um, I, 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 do you have a euro level that works for the different people of the Netherlands? Even if I would have that, I, I would not tell you, because I strongly believe that, that we need an independent European central bank. It is crucial. Because if we as politicians try to get our hands on the mm. policy making European Central mm. Bank, it will uh, hurt the overall standing of the euro. It's crucial they stay in it. But this is critical with Leuven doing so much of the great research on this and the other academics of, of the region. The euro level for the Netherlands or Germany is not the same optimal euro level for Italy or Greece. Will that be a tension as we unwind this monetary experiment? Well, the whole, the whole thing is this having the eurozone, you cannot devaluate. What you mm. can do, of course, and that's happening in Greece, and this needs to happen in Italy and other countries, is by reforms and by uh, making sure that your government budget is uh, within the, the frame of the stability and growth pact and your deficit is not more than 3% and moving south. By doing all of that, you can make sure that, and that was the whole idea of the stability and growth pact, the idea behind the EMU, that by doing all of this, collectively, we will move to a higher level of wealth creation and overall success for the whole of the Eurozone. And we are not at this moment delivering on that basic promise. Because we are not, we then have debates about the optimal, uh, right. where you pinpoint the Euro, the optimal this, yeah. the optimal that. But these are all debates which come out of the fact that we are not at this moment doing what we promised each other to do in 1991 in Maastricht. Um, uh, Prime Minister, last year here in Davos was the President Xi, the President of China, giving a speech about globalization, forward investment, onward looking. Yeah. Um, how much does that impact your country and how? what can you do to attract more Chinese investment? Well, we are, we are in very close uh, contact with the Chinese and, and, and we are in absolute terms number five in the world in terms of exports. Uh, and to China? Uh, no, to, to the whole, to, uh, uh, worldwide. I did not know that. That's and, 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 unbelievable. And, wow. and when we look at the foreign direct investment from China into Europe and from us into China, we are also in the top, well, in mm. the top league. Mm. Um, so for us, uh, free trade, um, foreign direct investments from China to us and from China, from, from us to China is crucial. And that is why we have very strong political relations with both the Prime Minister, the President and very many visits to and from because uh, that economy is now the second largest economy in the world and growing yeah. at a rapid speed. But can that relationship actually be further entrenched given that President Trump is slapping tariffs on some of their goods? Does it mean that Chinese money, instead of naturally maybe going back to the States, would come to Europe and to your country? It's very early days for that and very hard to say because uh, there have always been debates between the US, uh, the European Union and China on tariffs, on free trade. And in, in general terms, I would be the advocate always for free trade. Uh, to have um, uh, to have as, as 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 few barriers as possible to make sure that the free trade is working. For example, we are at this moment negotiating with uh, Paraguay, Uruguay, mm -hmm. Argentina, and Brazil a Mercosur uh, trade agreement, your EU Mercosur mm -hmm. uh, trade agreement, which is potentially even bigger than the one with Canada. So that's crucial for our future. And to get these things moving, we need to get rid as much as possible of all these barriers.